On the 27th of November 1913, Sopwith Aviation rolled out their newest design for its maiden flight. With Chief Test Pilot Harry Hawker at the controls, the small compact twin-seater biplane powered by an 80 horsepower Gnome rotary engine took to the skies for its first flight. Initially designated the SS, it wouldn't be long until the new design was nicknamed the tabloid after the then popular compact medical kit. The tabloid would prove to be quite a revolutionary aircraft. The design itself was quite conventional for the time, with it being made of a wire brace frame that was covered with fabric, but in the air it proved to be an extremely agile and fast machine. When it made its first public display at Hendon on the 29th of November 1913, it wowed the crowd with its flying capabilities. It was one of the first biplanes to have greater performance than monoplanes, and it is said that the tabloid is the reason why biplane designs were preferenced over monoplanes during the First World War. In one demonstration, Hawker managed to loop a tabloid some 12 times in a row. While the prototype was a twin-seater, all production models would be built as single-seaters. Production models also had the addition of a redesigned tail unit. Additionally, original tabloids had wing warping capabilities for lateral control, although this was replaced on later versions with conventional ailerons. It was able to reach a top speed of 93 miles per hour. The British War Office showed interest in the new design and in December 1913 had placed an order for nine single-seat versions of the tabloid and in March 1914 the order was amended to 12. The first examples were ready for delivery to the military in April 1914 and by June had entered service at Netherraven. It was the first production aircraft to see service with the military as a single-seat scout aircraft. In all, the Royal Flying Corps would take delivery of 36 tabloids. In January 1914, Harry Hawker took the prototype tabloid to his home country Australia for a series of demonstrations. His flying abilities wowed the crowds at Sydney, Ballarat, Albury and Melbourne and was sometimes witnessed by crowds surpassing 50,000 people. The demonstrations given by Hawker had never been seen in Australia before. During the tour, he also took guests for flights, including the then current Defence Minister. In one flight in Melbourne during February, Hawker landed the aircraft on the lawn at Government House, allowing Governor-General Lord Denham to inspect the aircraft. In all, some 60 flights were made in Australia before Hawker and the aircraft returned back to England a few months after their arrival. In 1914, Sotwith decided to modify a tabloid and enter it into the prestigious Schneider Trophy. The Schneider Trophy was a seaplane race, and thus the tabloid was modified to take a single float undercarriage. When this failed in testing, it was quickly redesigned to have a twin float system. The engine for this tabloid was a 100 horsepower no monosupub engine. On April 20th, 1914, flown by pilot C. Howard Pixton, the aircraft completed the 174 mile course in Monaco at an average speed of 86.8 miles per hour, earning it first place. This was a great achievement for Sotwith. The success of this modified tabloid would spawn the Sotwith Schneider, but more on that later. Following the outbreak of World War I, in August 1914, four tabloids were sent off to Boulogne in France where they would be utilised as a fast, unarmed scout or light bomber. In one encounter, an enemy aircraft was brought down behind Allied lines when the pilot flew his tabloid in circles around the enemy craft. He was only armed with steel darts. The tabloid was also the aircraft utilised for the first bombing missions over Germany during the war. However, by late 1914, the Royal Flying Corps had deemed the tabloid unsuitable for operations. The Royal Naval Air Service had also shown interest in the type and ordered 16, which started arriving in October 1914. They also took a few examples from the Royal Flying Corps. On the 8th of October 1914, two Royal Naval Air Service tabloids were successful in bombing the Cologne Railway Station and the Zeppelin Chez in Dusseldorf. Flown by Squadron Leader S. Gray and Flight Lieutenant R. L. G. Marix, each was armed with two 9kg bombs. Gray was unable to locate the target and instead bombed the railway station at Cologne, while Marix successfully dropped his bombs on the Zeppelin sheds at Dusseldorf, destroying the Zeppelin Z-9 airship. A single tabloid was to be utilised to test the deflector propeller system. 
This was a system where the propeller was fitted with steel plates that would deflect bullets when the airman fired his guns through the propeller. With the Royal Naval Air Service, the tabloid would see usage with home defence units, where they sometimes had the addition of Lewis machine guns added above the wing centre section. Furthermore, in early 1915, four tabloids were packed aboard HMS Ark Royal and sent to the Dardanelles. The Sotwith Schneider was a seaplane development of the Sotwith tabloid. It was very similar to the tabloid apart from having twin floats, a 100 horsepower no monosapape engine, a larger fin and rudder, as well as reinforced bracing. A single 303 machine gun was also fitted. Production of the Schneider began in 1914. Becoming available for service in early 1915, they were initially put into service to undertake coastal patrols along the English coast, looking out for enemy airships. Some were even put on light cruisers in the North Sea to try and intercept Zeppelins, but heavy seas often prevented them from being successful. It was in the Dardanelles that both the Schneider and Tabloid would have its most success as a military aircraft. Throughout the Gallipoli campaign, they were utilised for a range of roles, including light bombing and photo reconnaissance work. The tabloids were utilised from a land base at the island of Tenedos, an island just off the coast of the Gallipoli Peninsula, while the Schneiders were operated by both HMS Ark Royal and HMS Bermai Cree. The Schneider was still operating in the Aegean area as late as November 1916, where during that month, one example successfully shot down an enemy aircraft no original sot with tabloids or Schneider exist today, however a number of replicas do exist. There is a static display of a land-based tabloid at the Royal Air Force Museum Hendon, this example having been built during the 80s to original drawings and was airworthy before being put on display, while the Brooklyn's Museum has a replica of the race-winning 1914 Schneider Trophy version. Furthermore, in 1998, a company, Airdrome Aeroplanes, based in Holden, Missouri, USA, built an airworthy example. Airdrome Aeroplanes now sell a sop with tabloid kit for enthusiasts to build, and in 2012, another airworthy example was built based on this kit. It seems that at least 32 tabloids were built, with some sources stating as many as 42 were built, while a further 136 Schneiders were produced. While its military career was short, it would be the start of a long line of sot with fighters that would play a pivotal role during World War I. The ultimate of this line of development was the sot with camel. Still, when the tabloid first flew, it was the best of the best, a showcase of British engineering. <laughs>